Yeah, this is Kilo Zero Papa India Radio, K Zero P I R, 5 9 South Dakota. Uh, negative, it's Papa India Radio, Papa India Radio, QSL. Okay, if you get one of these uh, used KX2s, you might need to upgrade the firmware. And I checked mine, I held in the button to go to the menu, turn the dial to the FW revisions, and I'm at 2.69. And I checked the website, and they're up to 2.89 for the MCU. So I need to do the update. And this is the Elecraft web page. I'll put some links below. When I plugged in my FTDI cable that I got from Elecraft, it's a KX USB cable. I saw that I had a COM port pop up, COM7, and I looked at the driver, it's the FTDI. I didn't have to install a driver because I already had one of those cables. So I uh, just plugged it in, it popped up, I found the COM port. Now I'm going to go into the KX2 web page and download the utility and I've got Windows here. I'm going to save it and it saves to the top right hand corner. You can't see it. It's blocked by the radio but I'll just open it up. Real easy to install. Just double click on it and uh, when I go to install it I'll get a blank screen that's because uh, it's asking me if I want to allow it and I do then I just follow the prompts click agree to everything everything's the, the, the default it all looks good and that was really quick now I can run it I just need to set the COM port which was COM7 But before I do that, I need to attach the, the accessory cable or the USB cable. Plugs into the side of the radio. Okay, now I can select the COM port in the utility software. COM7 and hit the test button. And it finds it right away. Gives me the status. Tells me what firmware is on there. What the rate is, 4800. Now I can go over to the firmware tab. It checks it again. Shows what's on the radio. And over there underneath uh, available, that column, it says missing. And that's because I haven't downloaded anything from Elecraft yet. I'm going to back up here. If you look at the radio, I'm at the firmware revision screen and if I turn the VFO dial it shows me what DSP software is on there and I'm at 1.49 so that needs to be upgraded it'll all be upgraded at the same time upgraded or updated and in one of the manuals I have it says to go in and create a directory underneath that one and I'm going to choose not to do it, but if you want to, you can go in and put a directory in there and name it what software version we're going to be downloading from Elecraft, and it'll put it in that folder. But I'm not going to do that. I don't plan on downloading a lot of firmware. I'll click the button here. And once I do, it connects to the Elecraft servers and downloads it into that folder above the Elecraft firmware folder and it's pretty quick it tells me what's available now when I click close here you'll see what's available in that column version 2.89 for the MCU and then the update for the DSP. So I want to click that second button, send the new firmware to the radio, and it takes a couple of minutes. I'm going to speed it up here in just a second. 
so we don't have to wait very long but it does take a uh, two or three minutes and this is the MCU that it's updating if you look at the screen up there the top right shows the MCU and then the second part is the DSP once it finishes with this okay the MCU's done now it's going to load the DSP takes another minute or two I've been using it with the old firmware and it worked fine I didn't have any problems with it but it's always good to have the the latest version of firmware they do make some adjustments and it added the FM mode so that might be fun to try out I started all this and I didn't save my configuration file but you might want to do that in the very beginning in case something does go wrong okay that's done and it refreshes or updates and shows me that I have the latest firmware on it there's some other tabs in the utility I'll take a look at this one there's where you save your configuration I want to hit cancel I want to change the banner the welcome banner and put my call sign and name in there now I'll go and save the configuration I'll just leave the default in there So if I ever have any problems or I mess something up, I can come back and just load that configuration and it'll put the radio back to the way it was. I did a full reset or a reset when I got the radio. I just wanted to clear everything out. And then when I turned on the radio after that, it wouldn't work. So I had to go in and change a few things do a calibration I did the transmit gain calibration manually because I didn't have the software or the cable yet so I'm gonna go ahead and do it with the software and I'll show you what it looks like I should have turned the ATU off it didn't mention it here but in the manual it says when you're doing this transmit gain manually when you're doing the calibration manually to turn off the ATU and I probably should have done that but it went ahead and completed anyway if you look at the radio in the top right hand corner you'll see I'm attached to a dummy load and it's setting the transmit gain on all the bands it does it pretty quick okay it completed I'll finish it I did go back in and I edited my uh, CW memories in the radio this is an easy place to update that and of course I updated the welcome banner and the last thing I'm going to do is save the configuration and that's it I've really been enjoying this little radio I've sat out back with a dipole made some contacts I've taken it with me to work I drive a van and I use a hustler antenna on top of it and I'm just have, having a great time and I'm going to do some more videos on it so if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. 73 and good DX.